Hi everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. Today we're going to have a little bit of an unboxing. I don't think I've ever done a full like book haul unboxing before, so this is a big day for me. So August and September were a big month for book pre-orders for me. I've been pre-ordering them throughout the year and they all just happened to arrive in September, some this month, and then a handful of them I have already unboxed and then the rest I kept as a reward for when I got my uni grade back. And now that's back, time to open. I am gonna take a brief moment just to show off some other books I got recently, so I think that's fun, you know? Let's begin. More recent editions are for the What's Ins Buy One Get One Half Price offer. We have A Feast of the Beast and The Beast Is Me, which I've seen a lot about on Twitter and I am just, I actually have very limited idea what this is actually about. I know it's got horror vibes. The little, I love when hockey books there's a little pie chart down there. This one includes Desire, Ambition, Perfection and Sacrifice. Very fun, love that. And then we have an addition to the Greek mythology collection. This is one that's been on my TBR for a while, just because I've heard good things, and now I have it and it's shiny and beautiful. More recent additions. We have A Taste of Darkness. This is an anthology that I got because Rosie Talbot is in it, who did 16 Souls, and I don't know if I have the book. I do have the book, it's just over on the far shelf, so I can't grab it for you. But this one I follow in tips with, I think she follows me as well. She's just an overall lovely human being. And I really enjoyed her first book, and I want more horror in my life. This one's also shiny. There. Beautiful. This one was an impulse buy because Frances Hardinge is like rapidly becoming one of my favourite authors of all time. And Unraveler is a book that I originally read as an advanced copy, and I completely fell in love with. It's a book I gave five stars, and it's the only one I think ever where I've not had a single doubt about giving it five stars. So, down. I think it's like directly on the shelf below me, behind me, somewhere here. I have the hardback cover of Unraveler, which is again stunning and beautiful. And when I was browsing Waterstones the other day, first of all I was browsing the app and I saw that they had this exclusive edition. And I was browsing the shop and I thought, oh they won't have it, and then they did. And I am going to collect every, every version, every cover of this book I can find because I am just that in love with it. And like, look at her. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Also, can we see some shine in here? You can see a little bit of shine there. I really need to start taking my stickers off my books. I've been slacking recently. Okay, now into the actual pre-orders. First up we have one that I have already opened. This is House of Roots and Ruins by Erin A. Craig, who I think is here somewhere? Nope. Here on my shelf. I read House of Salt and Sorrows, absolutely fell in love with it. Then I believe I had an advanced copy ebook for Small Favours, again fell in love with it five stars all around so I knew I had to get this like sequel for House of Salt and Sorrows. This one I did unbox early because I honestly I forgot I was having it. This one came out in August I believe and I really need to get on to reading this. This I'll just say these are all Waterstones pre-orders so most of them are special editions. I thought this one was going to be like a stained page special edition but instead it's beautiful. And was this signed? Also, the end papers on this again are stunning. I want that as my wallpaper. And let's continue looking. This one's not signed, so I think it's just the standard hardback edition, but again, it's beautiful and I can't wait to get into this. We'll go for this one here next, because I know this is a Francis Hardinge one. This one, let's start, I'm going to tell you about it first. This one, again, I read as an advanced copy. I think it's a middle grade. It is a middle grade. Again, I loved it. And it had a lot of illustrations in it, so when I knew it was coming out, I knew I had to pre-order it. Because it also has a lighthouse in it, and I just have a fixation of lighthouses, for unknown reasons. So I knew I had to get this one, and I had to get a physical copy, as much as I love the ebook, just so I can appreciate the illustrations in all their glory. <sighs> Hello! You are, so you are signed copy as well. Okay, first of all, it's a hardback without the dust jacket, so I really love that. Then it is shiny, it is beautiful. We have the lighthouse here. This is about, let's tell it though. It's about a young boy and his father who has suddenly died and the father's job was to ferry the souls to the afterlife. So for this story, it's basically about this boy for the first time having to ferry the souls and the entire time he's being, ch being chased by his father's killer. But you think, yeah, oh, we're lighthearted fun children to read. Yes. <laughs> Not light-hearted and fun, but oh, beautiful. Beautiful again, well, that's my wallpaper. But I read it and you think, you know, is this really appropriate for children? And it very much is, because the whole sensitivity of dealing with death and these emotions of like losing a parent and kind of having a coming in of age when you were like far too young for it. 
But can I show you some of my favourite illustrations? I'm trying to find a good lighthouse one. Here's a double page spread one. Here we are, we have the lighthouse. It kind of looks like Lila Cup in a way, just for how the lines and the amount of like high contrast black there are. But beautiful. Here we have a fun little one here. I'm so excited to have it and I will read it again because I want to appreciate those illustrations that all their glory. Especially because I have my phone in dark mode, so it just inverts illustrations. So they just look really weird. So yeah, this, very excited to read again. I'm trying to guess which one's going next. I know I'm awaiting on one more book to arrive. It is the Shrubs Threads of Power or Threads That Bind. No, Threads That Bind is a book that I have somewhere on here. Threads of Power is the other, the new like Darker Shade of Magic book. And that was meant to be out sometime in September, but it's been delayed for issues. And they didn't tell me when it was arriving. And then it got delayed again. And they still didn't tell me when it could be arriving, my estimate even. So that's why I'm just doing this now instead of waiting. <laughs> Let's just go top to bottom. I kind of forgot what I have pre-ordered. I know the new Rick Riordan, the Percy Jackson one's in here somewhere. This is the Percy Jackson. I just see, I see the same pages. Surely it is that one. I love the colours and how vibrant this one is. I think I did prefer the US cover because it matches like the new US Percy Jackson covers that are a bit more minimalist. But this is fun and then it matches the copies that I have in a sense. My Rick Riordan shrine is, <laughs> it starts on this shelf and it goes down across the bottom. You can't see those stacked books in front of it. Like, oh, it's on the other side. Look how fun and exciting this is. And I, I didn't read these books as a child, so I didn't really grow up with Percy Jackson. I probably read them in like my early to mid-teens and immediately fell in love. Just with how charismatic Percy is as a narrator, and I need more of that in my books. So I read a lot of, you know, very, very serious, what, dark academia, YA, like I'm saying that as a joke. But you read things that are very prosy and poetic, so sometimes it's nice just to have some fun once in a while. Let's skim this one. Oh, we've got some purple end papers. We have a fun little spine. And I think I've heard that this is becoming a trilogy, this like new original trio. And I, again, can't wait for that. I just poke myself in the eye. Signed. That is an interesting signature. And the chapter titles. And again, I'm so excited for the show to come out. I haven't watched the trailers. I've seen screenshots from the trailers because I think I am just trying to save myself. I want to go into it blind if possible. Also, I haven't watched the Percy Jackson films. I refuse to. This one feels very light. This one, I think, must be the paperback. I, I impulse purchased a paperback. First of all, because I cancelled the Waterstones edition of Studying Drowning because I saw a spoiler for this cover and thought it was beautiful. And as much as I love the lovely green Waterstones one, I thought, you know, I don't need to, and I'm happy enough with this one. So I cancelled the Watson edition of that, and then I impulse purchased a paperback. This, I think, is Every Exquisite Thing, which is like a sapphic Dorian Gray retelling, to what I know. I also went for an actual pre-order of the Watson's edition because you can't quite see, but it's like dark purpley and bluey and pinky. That's like the boy flag colours. But it matches the front cover, and the front cover has hydrangeas on it, and again, I, they're my favourite flower. So this, I, I've not read, oh, let's crack those pages. Okay, and the tops are also stained black, so it's not just bare like Percy Jackson is. This author also wrote the Society for Solar Skulls, which I haven't read, but it's on my TBR. But this one just lured me in with how pretty the cover is, and I think I was going through a brief Dorian Gray fixation, I was watching... The film that has Ben Barnes in, I did not like it at all. <laughs> but as a concept, I really love Dorian Gray. So all the content, the, we've got a content warning. I love that books have started doing this now. Because I think I'm pretty okay with going in blind, because that, that's just my decision. I'm personally okay with that. But it's nice for other readers. And it's just like, you know, it has body horror. I'd love to know that up front. And then it's a signed... And it also has an author's note right at the start. Oh, this is the author's note at the start as I'm skim reading this. It's about authors who feel obligated to disclose private information to feel like they are like qualified to write a book in a sense. So a lot of authors being like forced into revealing their sexuality to show that they are obligated to write queer books. 
and that's what I think it is. It says, I ask you to please trust that I write this story from a deeply personal place. And it's a book I so, need, so badly needed when I was 18, which gives me the, the think, the think, the vibe that I probably also needed this when I was 18. But yes. Impulse purchase, beautiful setting, perfect. So now I'm still waiting on Schwab. What are you? Pink? I know, it's Cersei. It's Cersei. Look at them. So I only found out that this one existed because there was a person on TikTok, maybe BookTok, who went into a bookshop who had this edition and they were looking for a new edition of Cersei and the bookseller, bookseller said, hey, just to let you know, there's a matching cover coming out if you want a matching set. And that's how I found out that they released, they've released a matching set. And this is, they're, they're beautiful together. I keep hitting myself in the face with books. But again, they're beautiful individually and they're stunning and they really capture, you know, the classic Greek mythology retelling book that's gold and shiny and swirly and leafy. And oh, I'm not meant to be showcasing some of my pillows right now. And I am a big fan of the, the naked hardback vibe where there's no dust jacket, it's more or less just the book. Again, another thing that I will be having as my wallpaper. This is stunning, it is beautiful. I am obsessed with Madeline Miller. <laughs> And I can't wait for her to actually have more books that I can read forever. We have a little dear reader note at the start. Lovely. I'm going to assume this is an anniversary edition. Because I think the Song of Achilles one might have been... This Song of Achilles, let's have a look. Oh yeah, it says in the front. This is a 10 year anniversary, this is a 5 year anniversary. And I'm pretty sure she's writing a Hades and Persephone retelling right now. And I hope, again, that will get a matching, lovely, beautiful set so I can just stand here and like blind. Oh, nice. Just blind people with my books. So here are all of my Waterstones pre-orders. This is my reward for doing a good job at uni. <laughs> I'm not even joking. This is it. And when the Threads of Power arrive, my collection will be complete. And hopefully I will stop ordering books for a while until it's the Waterstones half price hardback sale on Boxing Day. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed unboxing some books with me. I was going to say I hope to do it again soon sometime, but I am not financially able to do that. Until then, I will see you next time. Bye.